Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. It is mail call time all the way from Taiwan but this is a surprise package from Tom Lynette of Unquiet Hands. I have no idea what to expect in this package but I do want to say thank you Tom for being awesome. This is a really wonderfully pleasant surprise. Let's crack this thing right open and check out what's inside. What do we have here? This is interesting. I see some... I don't know what this is. And then I see... Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. The revolver knuckle roller. I don't have just one. What? This, two? Two? What is going on? Okay, let's just remove the bubble wrap. What is going on? What a... Oh. These look like buttons, everyone. But they look like... Oh my goodness, these are the new tall buttons. Look at that. Wow. All I can say is wow. And he didn't just give me one set. I got two sets. Can I just say that these little boxes are just beautiful? Now I gotta grab myself my atrium. Hold on. Here we have the atrium. And these are the original buttons that came with the atrium. These are, I believe, the canopy buttons. I don't know if these are cupola buttons or the canopy buttons. By the way, the cupola buttons or the other one is right here. So first of all, this is how tall the stock buttons are on the atrium. Let's check out what the button height is gonna be with the new buttons. Dude, I'm so excited. And we shall give it a shot. Here we go. Whoa, look at that height. These are really, really tall. Wow. And even the sides are not flat. Look at that, guys. They're curved in a little bit. Very, very nice tactile feel. Oh, these steps are... Wow, they are not just deep. They're also more like... I don't want to say like, oh, there's this very beautiful texture to it. Like, what? Look at that, everyone. Look at how it sits. Hmm, for some reason, they screw on too tight. I'm not able to spin it with the atrium. That's, that's weird. Why is that happening? I don't know. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I think I know what's going on. I'll just get this set of buttons and I'll screw it down. I'll get another set of buttons and I'll screw those down. Ah, uh, see guys? I'm an idiot. They have a different height. I feel really stupid now because I just mixed the buttons up because they were in the same packaging so I just took it out. These buttons are made in two different heights for different bearing retention systems. So these are made for spinners with the screw cap bearing retention system aka vertical press system. And this set is made for spinners with the press fit style. So that's so cool. Here we go. This is definitely gonna work now. I can totally feel it in my bones. Just look at that, everyone. What? Look at that clearance, guys. This is this is amazing. For those of you who love taller buttons and you want more clearance, dude, this is the way to go. You don't even have to worry about like the thumb fat. See? See that? See that? I'm squeezing really hard. For some reason, it makes a spinner feel a little bit smaller. It's just totally different. And this though. I've never felt buttons that feel this way. This is like the first of its kind. This is really, really nice. Well done, Tom. Well done. Wow. On to the next item, which is the revolver knuckle roller. One with one sticker and another with two. So let's open the one with one sticker first. Wow, look at the packaging. COA, everyone. Revolver stainless steel R188, 5th of February, batch 1. That's awesome, Tom. Can't wait to see your thoughts on the revolver, Ben. Happy Chinese New Year. Oh, happy Chinese New Year to you, Tom. Kong Zi Fa Sai. Oh, look at this. This is the holographic sticker. This one is definitely going onto my cap. I've been waiting to receive a holographic UQH sticker. Dude, you know what's up. So we also have a cleaning cloth, a few other stickers, as well as a... Oh, this is a nice bearing removal tool. I remember Tom was doing a poll asking for people which design of the removal tool that was more sought after, and then he went and did it, and this one is so cool. This part is a bit wider, and here is a bit narrower, so you could use it on different cap sizes. But look at this, guys. This is the revolver knuckle roller. And yes, it has a bearing in it, like that. And it's meant for you to fidget with as well as roll apparently. Oh, that is comfortable. Dude, that is... <laughs> Man, that is so comfortable though. At this point of time, I want to say the marketing video that was made for the revolver knuckle roller, that is just amazing. It is beautifully done. And I don't really use my right hand much, but it seems that, oh, it's quite easy to roll with my right hand. 
uh, struggling a little bit but that's fun that's so fun now i'm gonna tell you guys i don't really know much about fidgeting with you know these kind of fidget toys i suppose but this is interesting now that i have it in hand i gotta try it out gotta put it on my edc for at least a week or maybe even more apparently you could unscrew these just like that aha uh -huh, there we go there we go look it's basically like a core look at that and then what you can do is grab your spinner fit it in like this and screw the cap back on and Oh guys, look, it works. What? It works. That's so cool. Well, this is like kind of like modularity on the next level. So you could That's nice. I could Oh, that's so cool. I could spin the frame itself. I could spin just this part. I could spin the spinner. What? Okay, this is just something new to me, like completely new. This is some new next level fidgetability kind of thing. All right, so now I don't know what I expect in this. Let's just crack it open. Here we go. Okay, another COA. This is the revol- Oh my goodness, look at that. It's in titanium. It is in titanium? What? I didn't even know that the revolver knuckle roller was available in titanium. What in the world? Made on the same day as the stainless steel one and also with some very nice stickers. Then we got a beautiful cleaning cloth and look at that. Oh, yes, not to forget that it also comes with a bearing removal tool. What? Oh, this is way lighter than that. Wow, this is like different. It feels Oh, it's two completely different things. I'm gonna remove the atrium from this. Oh, it feels like as if it's half the weight. But for the titanium one, it feels slightly more interesting because it feels like the weights are more thrown out simply because, you know, titanium is light, but then there are stainless steel bearings in here on the sides. So this kind of... Oh, listen to that. What? Wow, Tom, uh, I don't know what to say, Tom. This is awesome. Wow, thank you so much. And I'm gonna have to mess with these guys. Like, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't really know what to think about knuckle rollers right now. But all I can say is the first impressions is really, really fun to have. This is definitely going on my EDC. Oh, one thing I just noticed, like, this isn't a perfect circle. There's this nub on the sides right here. Can you guys see that? Like a little nub? I think that's actually quite cool because it's uniform. Even on the titanium version. I don't know why that is, but that's actually quite cute. Like, I like the way it looks. Wow, Tom, uh, once again, Tom, thank you so much. And for those of you who are wondering, this is the knuckle roller compared to a stubby. Just in case you're wondering if this would make sense for you to put it on your EDC or in your pocket, I would say that this is highly pocketable and I'm gonna do it right now as I head off to the office. Six and a half hours later. Show us your skills. What skills? I got no skills. Okay, I did it. Remember, I used 10 points for a face that wasn't on camera. That was good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not supposed to use mine. Never mind. You did this? My finger a bit. I can go downwards, I cannot go back up. I'm just gonna take Flip it onto your phone. Oh, oh damn, I did it again. Hey, damn, got it. Damn. Oh shit. Oops. <coughs> eh, power of the force. I tried this button. Oh, this is a very nice box. Oh, feels nice. A lot of space. Solid, right? Yeah. Quite comfortable. Eh? Yeah, very, very different move. Like, it's like two ripples. Mm. Mm. Getting fat, right? <laughs> quite, quite nice. Eh? Comfortable, so. But these are very deep buttons. Good job, Tom. Good job. I got them on my sanitarium. Is this a sanitarium or asylum? Awesome, man. Fat, fat collider buttons. Super comfortable. Super, super comfortable. Oh, I'll try something. Index finger. Still cool. A few moments later.
Oh, what do you think? Say, oh shit! Say you roll your thumb around like that. Yeah. After you're done rolling, right? After you're done rolling, you try to kind of pinch it, then you start again with the thumb. No bad, right? Okay. So, so you use your thumb in the exercise also. Yeah. So it's rolling. Then you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, not bad. Yeah. Sick. Hey. Oh, uh, I just wanted to share this with you guys because it's a very Singaporean thing to have this drink called a Milo Dinosaur. Not everyone has it, not everyone knows of what Milo is. I think some South East Asian countries do have it, some Asian countries, maybe Japan, maybe Korea. But then we have this thing called Dinosaur here in Singapore. And when you have a dinosaur, what you do is you actually have a drink of Milo and then you add more Milo powder to the top of it. I kind of want to show it before Tetris finishes it because it's one of the local favorites here. And uh, well, there's another upgrade called the Milo Godzilla, but that's when you add ice cream on top. Is it good, bro? Milo dinosaur? Yeah. Why? Why do, you, why do you like dinosaur? Why did you choose to order a dinosaur? It was the cheapest drink on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting you to say something like, because it's dope or something. No, I seldom drink Milo that much. Kitty. I was hoping you'd say that because I think Kitty is a very Asian thing to say, but not all Asians believe in it. So it's like, uh, in certain cultures, certain foods are like classified as heaty or cooling. It's kind of like it helps your internal temperature or something like that. So Milo is kind of like heaty, but if you eat like cucumber, it's cooling. If you've eaten too much heaty food, then you know, you might get like a sore throat or something like that. And if it's too cold, then you, well, then you fall sick, like you get a cold. But yeah, I just thought I would share that with you guys. This is called a Prata. In Malaysia, you call this a Chennai. And in India, I believe you guys call it just normally just roti but we call it roti prata here but what she's having is a banana prata and an egg prata you can't really see the ingredients until you start eating it banana prata on top egg prata below and it comes with curry like that there's a lot of styles of prata here there's like paper prata tissue prata plaster prata then um, prata bomb yeah there's, there's a lot of different type of prata kinds and it's just awesome here but what i ordered was a my first time ordering this masala prata i've never tried this before so masala prata with cheese my usual order is a cheese mushroom prata and then one plain prata we call it kosong prata this is a mutabak chicken or beef or mutton Meat combo. Meat combo means what? Like chicken and mutton? I have no clue. Really? Yeah. I really don't know. And this is called a Roti John. Roti John. Why is it called Roti John? I don't know. Personal name John decided to use French. Okay. Make a local style prata. Dude, it's real. You know, hashtag. Uh, and the guy just had news. Name John. History from no, that. Dude, really? Really? <laughs> oh, Vicky. <laughs> this is a cheese masala prata. I'm going to try to break it open and show you guys what it's like because I've never seen it. This is what the masala looks like. Oh. Lunchtime, bye everyone. One eternity later. I am back everyone and I've taken quite some time to record this part of the video down. As you can see, it's a totally different angle. And the reason why is because, well, this video is about the revolver knuckle roller. And I actually recorded the usual top-down style. But then as I was editing the footage, I felt that it just there was just something missing about it because this wasn't a spinner, it's a knuckle roller. So after quite some time of thinking about it, I felt that maybe this angle would be the best because I could speak to you directly to the camera at least and then also have the knuckle roller in hand so I could just mess with it like that and then you guys could kind of see how it really looks like now the next thing I'm gonna say is that I'm no knuckle roller connoisseur so I don't think it's fair if I were to say I'm gonna give you a review of the revolver knuckle roller and so to be fair I decided that I would just talk about it and share with you my thoughts because this is the very first knuckle roller I've ever received and I think that sharing my thoughts about it would be the fairest way to go so once again shout out to Tom Lynette of Unquiet Hands for sending these over to me yes it is a pair and putting that kind of faith and confidence in me and my videos so here I am doing the best that I can and I hope that you guys all enjoyed this video at the end of the day so the first thing I will talk about is actually what I think about 
the collider buttons. These are known as the collider buttons and yes, they come in two different sizes. One size to fit press fit spinners and the other size to fit spinners with a bearing retention system. The difference between the two versions of the buttons doesn't just stop at the height. Now, if you look closely at the version that is meant for press fit spinners, you'll find that the edge is just smooth like that. On the version that is meant for spinners with the retention system, you actually have a little notch there. And shout out to Mead because Mead put an O-ring around it which just gives it an extra layer of customization which is kind of cool. So yes, you can actually fit an O-ring around this and why that is done I'm not so sure. I'm sorry, I didn't ask Tom about this. Maybe there's an actual explanation. Maybe each of these sizes are offered in both kind of styles. I don't know. But one thing I will say is that the collider buttons are super comfortable. And personally, for me, recently I got myself the first run of the Cut Bar by Spinetic Spinners. And the first run featured buttons that were really, really narrow. Like as in they were really, really flush. Like almost the same height as the raised parts of the spinner as well. Which might cause some problems if you guys are like me with a fatty thumb problem. Where the spinner frames are actually rubbing against your thumb if you press down on one side too much but now with the collider buttons on this man let me tell you not only does it offer great grip and a nice tactile feedback when you hold the button that height that clearance is just everything that you're looking for if you are a fan of tall buttons i know that those of you out there who use a pinch grip don't have the same problem as i do but let me tell you the collider buttons the way it's made see those nice little ripples there even if you use a pinch grip it's gonna feel super comfortable it actually feels like three different buttons just different sizes going in you know what i mean so wonderful job by unquiet hands on this i did not expect a button like this and this kind of machining it's crazy it's like it's like shock waves, if I were to say. It's like shock waves going inwards or coming outwards. So good job, good job, really, good job. And I think that it goes really, really well with the cut bar. It's just a match made in heaven, in my opinion. So moving on to the knuckle rollers. One thing I failed to mention in the earlier part of the video during the unboxing is that you could use the original Canopy or Cupola buttons from the atrium on the revolver itself. Yes, the buttons do fit. This actually is another layer of fidgeting, like I mentioned. Some people love fidgeting with the spinners this way. Now you kind of like have a stem that you can hold on and then you can just flick it with your thumb. Some people will enjoy this very much. Personally, I think it's interesting but it's not something that I really like. However, if you do, I think, don't, don't get me wrong on this, but I think that if you were to spin it fast enough and if you have a spinner that has its weights like really thrown out, you could spin it and then you could balance this part on another object and you could actually see the whole spinner just rotating around like that. It should work, that's just normal physics. I just never tried it out. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys that my favorite combination, and I know it's not an official retail product official is the combination of the titanium body and titanium buttons with the stainless steel cores. Tom actually told me I could throw even more weight out if I changed the buttons or the caps here to the stainless steel version but I personally enjoy this two-tone look. Two-tone meaning that the titanium actually is a little bit more of a darker shade of grey versus the stainless steel one and for me I've been messing with this so much to the point that it got so many scratches I decided I would just stonewash it in the end. So yes the stainless steel version as you guys can see has been stonewashed. The titanium cores have not been stonewashed. They still have the original brushed finish but like I mentioned my favorite is the titanium with the stainless steel cores out here and I think it's just the way the weights are being thrown out it's not too much it's just nice for me now before I proceed on talking about this I'm gonna tell you guys more specs about it because now there's updates of the revolver knuckle roller so I'm looking at the unquiet hands website right now and there are three options for the stainless steel revolver and that is the original brushed version a black version as well as a deep stone washed version now for the titanium version it is offered in the original titanium finish which is brushed you guys saw in the earlier part of the video but at the same time there are now five beautifully anodized titanium pieces by flyaway toys unfortunately four of these are currently sold out only this one is left for sale right now so you guys can see the prices it ranges anything between 43 dollars to 56 dollars for the non-anodized versions there also is a bundle of two revolver knuckle rollers which is going for 84 dollars but the anodized versions are going for about 85 with regards to the stainless steel revolver it is weighing in at 63 grams and for the titanium version it is 43 grams now the total height of the revolver is about 60 millimeters, which is six centimeters tall, slightly bigger than the average spinner length nowadays. Now that I'm done with the specs, I'm gonna talk to you about the revolver. I picked the titanium version because I felt that I enjoyed something a little bit lighter for a knuckle roller. From a long time ago, I was always able to twirl my pen or pencil, not like this way, I, I just can't do that. But what I can do is this, and yes, I am a left-hander. I don't know if there's an actual name for doing this, and even the other way, which I'm not so pro, 
proficient at. And at the same time, I could kind of do it with a coin. This is a $1 Singaporean coin. Of course, if the coin is bigger or wider, it's gonna be easier. Let me get my ring off. So I'll just balance it up here on my fist and then just use the meat of my fingers to kind of roll the coin like that. So I have been practicing trying to get it back up and I think I'm successful this time. So I've kind of had prior practice, not even realizing that knuckle rollers were a thing. Maybe it's a new thing, I don't know, but this is my actual first knuckle roller. And before this, I never really saw a point. You know what I mean? Like you could just twirl a pen. But then when I got this, I realized, okay, it's specifically made for twirling this around with your fingers. And now after doing more research, it's more of a skill toy. It's a skill-based fidgeting toy, which I think is kind of cool. Like before that, every time I used a pen, I was just using my four fingers without the thumb. But with the revolver, I actually start to use my thumb a lot more. There's this flip over. I don't even know what this is called, but this is really cool. I never even thought I could do that. See, that was quite cool. Uh, it took me quite a while to get that down, but I realized that it just made me think about more and more possibilities, more and more ways of, I guess, performing tricks or fidgeting with this. So yeah, I got onto YouTube, watched quite a lot of videos and well, the basis was this actually, the original basis was just this, but then I wanted to make sure that I could find different ways of continuing with it. So I guess maybe thinking about making this video actually gave me a little bit more time to mess with a knuckle roller, but then I dropped it a lot, like I dropped it a lot. And the thing about the stainless steel version is that once it got dinged, it was kind of like, ugh. It got really nicked really bad and so i realized that because titanium is a stronger metal it's slightly harder it didn't get as many scratches or as many dents as the stainless steel version did now on the very first day that i was messing with it i already dropped the stainless steel version i actually have like some pretty big dents here and there i don't know if you guys can see it in camera but there are some really big I would call them even gaseous. Yeah, so it's like big gaseous on the stainless steel one. I was like, man, not only is this heavier, it's also easier to get more damage in my opinion. And so with the titanium version, it didn't feel as painful as the stainless steel version when I dropped it. Granted that yes, when you put it sideways, and the part that touches the ground is the core, which is now in stainless steel. But most of the time when I drop it, it's just gravity always pulling it down this way. So I always hit the corners of the buttons instead. And so with titanium, I didn't have to worry about that so much. And so I still watched the stainless steel version first because it was really, really beat up. And then I decided I would do the same for the titanium version. It actually was brush, brush, brush with two stonewashed cores. And that was kind of cool. I actually took a picture of it then. I showed it to Tom and Tom was like, wow, that's awesome. But then you know, the more I fidged it with it, the more I messed with it, I realized that I was giving it a lot of scratches here. So I thought, you know what, I'm just don't watch the whole thing. Oh, by the way, I want to mention this. There is an Unquiet Hands logo on one side of the revolver. You can't really see it on mine now because it's kind of like worn away because I stonewashed it, right? But every single revolver will have a Unquiet Hands logo on one side, just one side. And I think it's very, very tastefully done. By messing with this a lot, I realized I start to use my thumb a lot more. As you guys can see, it feels kind of like natural to me now. This particular way of fidgeting with it, when you finish this roll, and then you grab it with your thumb and you kind of coast it up here to the top of your index finger and then you flick it around and you continue. I like that a lot. Another way is if you kind of try to flip it around instead of just coasting it up. So you kind of do that. I'll try that again. So you kind of just flip it around and then you carry on, flip it around and roll again. So flipping it around is kind of like that. Now, this is not a trick tutorial. I'm not so good at this, but I'm also able to kind of reverse the whole, the whole method, like just reverse it all kind of like that. So when I get up here, I could drop it in between and then flip it up again and continue. So this is really like a skill-based toy and I, I actually had a lot of fun learning it practicing the new stuff that I wasn't, you know, used to doing before. And it's kind of like a Beglary. I don't own a Beglary. I don't know how to play with a Beglary, but I know that those people who actually use Beglaries, I know it's a skill-based toy and it's not easy. You need time to practice it. And this is one of those things. And I, I, I really appreciate it. Like I never expected this much fun because for me, when I use spinners, I use it in my right hand. I don't know why. It's just natural. I just grab it with my right hand and I start to fidget with spinners in my right hand. And in my left, I'm used to doing this. So it's kind of like now both my hands are kept busy all the time. So truly it is me having unquiet hands. It's, it's really cool. No pun intended guys, but yeah, it's just me having unquiet hands. And I really like it. Right now, it's like I'm trying to learn another trick, which is to kind of swap like from this to this. And it requires me to have a kind of like an action like that. So what's happening is like I have a new motivation. You know what I mean? Like just suddenly I'm just motivated. I'll be like thinking about the move and then I'll be, okay, well, first of all, I'll go through the motion, just this and then this without my middle finger. So open, close, open again without the middle finger. And I'll try and do the trick with the revolver. So it's kind of like open, close and open without the middle finger. And I dropped it again. 
but you know what I'm trying to say, right? I guess it's something that I have to keep working on, but I think this motivation is what I kind of wanted to share with you guys. And the biggest thing about it, in my opinion, is that it is way more acceptable to the general public. Like you spinner enthusiasts know, like when you're out in public and you're fidgeting with your spinner, sometimes you get kind of like weird looks from people or like people who are just overly judgmental. But I guess for me, I'm more blessed in that sense that my friends are very accepting and most of them know that I run this channel. But when I actually mess with the knuckle roller, people just look at it and go like, oh wow, is that a new toy? Like a new fidget toy, is that a thing? And because the action reminds everyone of what it is like to fidget with a pen, a twirl a pen, then this becomes a lot more acceptable. I don't know why, but it's just a lot more acceptable. And this is pretty discreet. It's narrow, you know what I mean? Yes, it is taller than the average spinner, like I mentioned, but it's way narrower and it's very easy to slip in your pocket. Like in your shirt pocket, your pants pocket, your back pocket, and it won't get in the way. And also at the same time with this, you could satisfy your spinner needs because you can actually hold it like this and just spin away. I do that with my right hand most of the time. It's granted that I actually hold it in a kind of like a claw grip like that. And then I just fidget with my thumb. Now from that, moving on to one of the things that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to spin one core and do an entire twirl and make sure that by the time I'm done, it's still spinning. So kind of like that. And the problem arises here when I'm up here again. But it's just fun, you know, like the possibilities are endless and I would say that it's a totally different kind of fun as compared to spinners. So I like it. This is what I think about knuckle rollers right now. I know there's a lot more that I can do. Some people actually throw it up in the air and do like crazy twirling tricks and stuff like that. And I'm not able to do it. But this, this is a kind of a two in one thing that I really enjoy. Stand it up on one end, put a spinner and fidget with it just like that. And that's cool as well. You could actually put two spinners if you want, one on each end and just pinch it some way and then just fidget with it. Oh wow, I didn't even think about that. New way of fidgeting. That's cool. That's, that's kind of cool. Huh. Of course. Oh wait, I'm actually doing it. Wow, I did it. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I never knew I could do that. So yeah, guys, I mean, I spent quite a bit of time with the revolver and it's all thanks to Tom. Thanks for sending these over to me. So much to the point that even my girlfriend was like, oh, Wow, you guys know it's really hard to impress her with a fidget spinner. She really loves to try it. But when she saw me messing with this, when we were FaceTiming, she was like, what's that? And I'm like, this is a knuckle roller. And she immediately went like, oh, that looks like fun. So like I said, this is a lot more relatable to the mass public, to the general public. And that is my thoughts on the revolver knuckle roller, everyone. I don't want to give like my verdict or anything because like I said, this is not a review. By no means should this be a review because number one, this is my very first knuckle roller. Number two, like I don't even know what are the kind of things that people want to know about the knuckle roller because this is really subjective. It's really subjective. Like it depends a lot on things like hand size, finger size, the way you hold it, the materials that you have, whether you like metal or you like plastic because I know that there's a lot of knuckle rollers out there and it looks like there are going to be a lot more in the near future, kind of like how ring spinners were a thing. So I think that knuckle rollers with the spinning function is going to be a thing as well. Who knows, right? Who knows? All I know is that I've had fun with this for the past three weeks, you know, and this was a part of my EDC. I had a spinner in one pocket and then I had the knuckle roller in my other pocket because like I said, right hand spinners, left hand knuckle roller. When I'm not holding a pen, I could just mess with this. And at work, I use a mouse with my right hand. So in my left hand, I could just fidget with this. Unless I'm doing some other typing work, then it's a different story altogether. I like it so far. It's been fun. And I think that it's quite a challenging skill-based toy. There are a lot more tricks that I want to learn. Like it's just motivating me. I know that there are spinner tricks as well, but with the kind of spinners that we purchase, guys, I don't think anyone wants a spinner to be dropped on the floor like that, right? Spin it on the table, spin it in your hand, spin the core, put a spinner in there, put it on the table, spin the spinner with the knuckle roller on the table, just have the knuckle roller like that, just messing around with it. It is just cool. And that's it everyone. Thank you so much for sharing in the size of my life. As usual, links in the video description down below. Go check them out, Unquiet Hands. You guys are doing some crazy stuff. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it because it's always awesome, man. Good job. Now I'll catch y'all in the next one. Gaga Boost.